I, 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 I've never had liked my name. I was in, uh, I guess, elementary school. Back then, the teacher used to do a roll call. Uh, she would ask uh, the students to, to say their name and one by one, and then she would mark up attendance. And I knew I was about three, four, five years old at the time, and uh, I was uh, becoming very anxious. I knew something was wrong because when my time came to say my name, instead of saying Greg O'Grady, I said Joe O'Grady. When I said Joe, the teacher looked at me, uh, 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 question, questioning why I said that, but she didn't pursue it and just moved on. So I, I didn't call it stuttering at the time. I, I had trouble talking, and uh, so I, I started to avoid situations. I didn't have many friends, and uh, in high school, it's interesting that I wasn't really uh, asked to participate or read in school. So, so. Ev Everybody knew that I stuttered, and, and I, 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 I would classify myself as a spare person who stutters. But so I started to do all the avoidance, the uh, tricks of the trade. I used to avoid telephone calls, social gatherings, meeting new people. There, yeah. there are days still, depending how I'm feeling emotionally, psychologically, if I'm tired, haven't slept too well, depending on these the situations, uh, I find that you know, as I was saying, I do have my train wreck experiences, but when I actually started, because I, I, I get into these blocks, like my name, or when I'm trying to, to communicate a message, it feels like I'm sort of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm out, out of control, and there's almost like I'm choking, and it's, it's this physical reaction because you panic, there's a lot of anxiety associated with stuttering, and there's a, so you go through all a, a sort of a platter of emotions like in shame, like shame, embarrassment. Uh, you're wondering what the other, the listener on the other side of the phone, or if I'm at a meeting, or so they call stuttering a beast, and it is a beast. It's a quality of life issue, and uh, because as, as, as you know, it, it affects one's aspect, all aspects of one's life, like relationships, uh, personal, professional. And it sort of it, it takes away, it sort of eats away at one's sense of identity, self-respect. Because I mean, you know, many people started, we, you know, uh, we're so caught up in survival, trying to get through a day, trying to get through a conversation, or anticipating a conversation, that, that you're so focused on, you know, how am I going to get through, what, you know, what words am I going to substitute? That, uh, that that has a negative impact. Well, in, in any Catholic Newfoundland family back then, we're going back a few years ago, that it was always our golden boy uh, destined to be the priest of the family, and I was destined to be a priest. And uh, so the advantage about that, I, I started to use that because I felt special, and nobody sort of uh, challenged me because I was so quiet. I use that as a way of, uh, you know, trying to avoid or hide my stuttering. It was like I started the foundation as a covert stutterer. So for years and years and years, I was a co covert stutterer at home. I uh, moved from Newfoundland to Ottawa, so I, I did follow up in terms of trying to, uh, I guess, follow my dreams of being a priest. But the day that I went to the airport in St. John's to, uh, to, sort of, uh, to, to buy my plane ticket, this is when I realized that uh, the severity of my stuttering because I could hide it for so many, for such a long time. When I asked to to buy my plane ticket, I had I had so much difficulty that uh, the uh, ticket agent asked me to to write it down. So that's how severe my stuttering was, and uh, and that was sort of a harsh reality as to to uh, I realized that I, I can no longer hide. Speech therapy is very important. However, you, 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 you cannot uh, benefit from speech therapy without uh, addressing the emotional component as well. So the, the analogy that we use in uh, stuttering is the iceberg analogy. Uh, the tip of the iceberg, which is the 10% of the, uh, of the stuttering, is the physical uh, manifestation, manif manifestations of stuttering, the repetitions, the prolongations, eye bleaking of stuttering. But the 90% uh, uh, 
of the uh, stuttering is the emotional component. And that's when people who stutter have a lot of uh, trouble speaking, the listener sees the actual physical component, all the struggling, the, eye co the uh, blinking of the eyes, but they don't see what the emotional component is, which is the shame, the embarrassment, the feeling of uh, being judged. And uh, so, so that's 90% that's that's of the, uh, the lower, below the surface of the iceberg. And based on my lived experience as a person who stutters, I feel that uh, the, uh, the stats are off, the numbers are off, because I feel the tip of the iceberg is 1% of the stutter. Uh, the below the surface of, of the emotion component is 99%. And he's saying there's no cure for stuttering, there's no cure. And uh, so the focus uh, uh, is on managing one's stuttering, and people who stutter need, need ongoing support to help, uh, help you know, manage our stuttering, but just have, have a support network. And this is where I really sort of, in, I'm a strong advocate for support for mental health of people who stutter, and unfortunately there's very little known in our province. If one succumbs to stuttering to control uh, their own lives, you, you, you lose a sense of identity, you lose a sense of in, individuality. You really, don't, uh, for me anyhow, that one becomes a non-person. You, you're just surviving. You're just surviving. And uh, I feel that uh, what I've learned, so you, uh, for many years I led studying to uh, I write my chapter in life in terms of avoiding various situations, avoiding talking to people. My journey as a person stutter, all this, all this sort of, uh, all these factors, has helped me to, to, to understand my stuttering, how stuttering affects people in terms of our decisions, our behaviors, our career choices, and how I feel it's, it's so important that the, that, you know, that the general public become more aware of the needs of people who stutter. I think the more that we learn about the impact that stuttering can have on one's personal life, the, the, the more that you're, you're able to handle it.